Good morning. First, I would like to thank the organizers. Uh, thank you for inviting me. It's a very pleasure for me to be here. The title of my talk is uh, New Philosophical Aspects and Some Philological Questions Emerging by Exploring the Digital Edition of Wittgenstein's Nachlass. And the main goal of my contribution is uh, trying to highlight some philological questions that need to be considered by editors and translators of Wittgenstein's writings and by scholars of Wittgenstein's philosophy. So the starting point of my contribution uh, are the advantages uh, of the philosophical opportunity of exploring Wittgenstein's in our class. I will use two special tools for my argumentation. The first two, my personal experience as editor of the two discovered letters of 1934 from Wittgenstein to Zraffa. They are two of Wittgenstein's letters addressed to Zraffa and considered lost. They are found in 2019, thanks to the advisory of their sale, included in a sale catalog, catalog from an antique dealer in Germany. A friend of mine, who was at that time a librarian at the Hannover University Library, informed me that uh, um, there was the presence of uh, these two letters of February uh, 1934 in this sales catalog. Um, I, um, I told this uh, discovery to Halloween Spichler and uh, Jonathan Smith, uh, and then the uh, Royal Library, um, the Trinity College Library, uh, learned about the two letters, and after having made uh, the necessary checks, decided to buy both and to store them among the collections of additional manuscripts. So we will return to talk about these two discovered letters and their publication. Now let's come into Let's come back to the introduction of my talk. The second tool I intend to use for constructing the argumentation is my personal experience as a reader of the digital edition of the NACLAS and as user of the web resources such as those provided by the Wittgenstein Archive of Bergens. Oberg, Bitfine, Interactive Transcriptions Platform, and Wittgenstein Ontology Explorer. In order to develop my project about Zraffa's influence on Wittgenstein, and to realize a little project, a little part of my project about a Wittgenstein dictionary. The first part of this project will be published in the next issue of the Italian philosophical journal Paradigmi, with the title Fragments of a Wittgenstein's Dictionary the concept, form of life, and primitive. I use the English version of, my, of the real Italian title, Frammenti di un dizionario wittgesteiniano, i concetti di forma di vita e primitivo. In fact, the article was written in Italian, and I hope that I will also be able in future to realize some parts of this project in English. So, our start points. We need to assume that Wittgenstein's writings are affected by some critical issues. If we observe Wittgenstein's manuscripts in their original state, we became aware that um, we, we become aware with the exclusion of the Tractatus, they are not thought for publication, and therefore they are not ready for it. The works of Wittgenstein published posthumously by his trustees are the product of sometimes opaque choice and of a selection of parts or writings that often doesn't consider the entire and later developments of Wittgenstein's thought. In the NACLAS, we find several versions of the same project of work or the same thought. These versions can present literal linguistic variations or important conceptual modifications. So, editing Wittgenstein's writings for publishing the work can mean considering an incomplete part of the develop development of his thought or only an intermediate phase of his looking through a phenomenon. The corpus of Wittgenstein's writing uh, shows a certain complexity due above all to the way in which Wittgenstein worked. His writings are the result of continuous revisions and re-elaborations. 
use it to cut out and resemble the pieces we did attempt to give shape to the thought it was developing. The result is very far from the great philosophical systems. And as Wittgenstein himself wrote in the preface of philosophical investigations, it looks more like landscape sketches than an organic and ordered composition. What are the consequences of these related critical issues of Wittgenstein's writings? As I've already said, the several versions of the same project of work or the same thought. We will have the opportunity to see examples of different versions of the same thought when we will consider some results of my work for creating the Victor Science Dictionary. So published work can include an incomplete part of the development of Wittgenstein's Science thought on a topic, or only an intermediate phase or is, a look, of, is a looking through a phenomenon, how I use a, a, a Wittgenstein's Science expression, looking through. The necessity to look at, let me use uh, once again a Wittgenstein's expression, to look for the original version of Wittgenstein's writings for exploring the stages, the changes, the different movements of his thought. If we just look um, through the drop down menu available on the home page of the NACLAS transcription. Uh, interactive uh, platform provided by the Bergen, Activ uh, the Bergen Act Wittgenstein Archives, we can remark that the work of Wittgenstein um, which were published um, include part of different Wittgenstein manuscripts or typescripts. In some cases, Wittgenstein projected to publish a book and therefore he creates typescripts which include parts of different previous manuscripts or sometimes cuts of previous typescripts. So the experience of editing the two discovery the letters of 1934 from Wittgenstein to Zraffa permits to show some specific needs of editing Wittgenstein's writings. The two letters have been published in the Nordic Wittgenstein Review, issue 8, number 12, year 2019. I will consider four points, which are four phases of this work of editing. These uh, phases, these uh, points are the first reading of the manuscript, the attempt of transcription, the formulation of a legend, and the philosophical and philological implications. So what about the first reading of the manuscript? It is the first action that allows to become familiar with the contents of the text and with Wittgenstein's way of writing and to become aware of its features. Transcriptions. Trying to transcript Wittgenstein's writing, normalizing it, reveals difficulties, difficulties of interpreting some signs and words. Uh, maybe it's not clear, but in, uh, on the side where there is my transcription, there are some words uh, clearer than others. So there are words in pencil, words in pencil, words of difficult interpretation. And then the legend. It is necessary to explain to the reader the signs of intervention on the text by the author, the gaps in the ciphering some parts. The editor chooses a sign for each of these cases. In the cases of Wittgenstein's manuscripts, we never have to deal with uh, clean texts. Uh, the situation with the typescripts uh, is somewhat different. So, so sometimes better than uh, the situation with manuscripts, but we uh, never have uh, a clean text. And then the last phase, the last point, so the more articulated point, uh, philological and philosophical issues. They can be distinguished in uh, connections with other documents, philosophical collocation within the development of Wittgenstein thought, new elements about the relationship between Wittgenstein and Zraffa, highlighting aspects related to Wittgenstein's method to do philosophy, to discuss philosophical questions, and illuminations of aspects of Wittgenstein's personality. What about the first issue, connection with other documents? I will try to show you that what it means. The letter of 21 February 1934 
as it emerges clearly from heat, is related to a conversation held the previous day between Wittgenstein and Zerfa. In fact, at the beginning of the letter dated 21 February uh, 34, Wittgenstein writes, I quote, our conversation yesterday was, has impressed me greatly. For four, in a sense, it was quite futile. It showed to me certain phenomena in our mental intercourse, which I had often seen before, but never as, as absolutely clear as yesterday." End of quote. If we compare the appointments noted in Wittgenstein's and Zraffa's diaries, pocket diaries, so I registered all Wittgenstein and Zraffa uh, meeting in meetings in a list published in another issue of the Nordic Wittgenstein Review. Nordic Wittgenstein Review, so the issue um, 7, uh, number 1, uh, year uh, 2018. We remark that no appointment on 20 February 1934 has been recorded in either of the pocket diaries. And therefore, this conversation probably happened in addition to the scheduled meetings. This data emerging from the comparison of the discovery the letter and the recorded meetings suggests that the meetings between Wittgenstein and Zraffa may have been more than those resulting from the count of the appointments registered in the pocket diaries of both. The letter of 21 February 1934 also provided the further evidence of Wittgenstein's debt to Zraffa. Acknowledged in another letter, the letter of 19 January 1934, and in the preface of philosophical investigations, Wittgenstein didn't intend to lose the benefits of Zraffa's influence on his thinking. So this is light about the, um, the appointments registered in, uh, in the pocket diaries, so the list of the meetings, of all meetings. Uh, in a letter of 19 January 1934, Wittgenstein writes, I quote, I have learned an enormous amount from you in the conversations we had during the past two or three years, end of quote. So the letter is included in Wittgenstein in Cambridge. In the preface to the philosophical investigations, Wittgenstein writes that for the most consequential ideas of this book, uh, he was indebted to the stimulus that his thought increasingly received for many years from Zraffa's criticism. There are almost uh, two other related documents connected with the issue of Wittgenstein's debt to Zraffa introduced in uh, this uh, uh, discovery letter. So they are the testimony of von Ritt, according to which Wittgenstein said that I quote, his discussions with Zraffa finally made him feel like a tree from which all branches he had been cut, end of quote. And the letter to Zraffa dated 23 August 1949, um, in which Wittgenstein argues about the difficulties of understanding each other in their intercourse, and in fact, he writes, I quote, only by a real tour de force it was possible for us to talk to each other years ago, when you were younger. And if I may compare you to a mine in which I worked to get some precious ore, I must say that my labor was extremely hard. For also that what I got out of it was well worth the labor." End of quote. The notes exchanged and discussed by Wittgenstein and Zraffa from the end of January until the beginning of March 1934 concern the same topic. So the topic is the possibility of Nazification of Austria and its consequences in terms of political and way of life changes compared with the changes of fashion and taste. The second discovery the letter uh, that of Sunday, 11 uh, March uh, 1934, is related to, the, to these notes. The second letter uh, had already been uh, written as a draft on 27 February 1934. It is deducible 
from what Wittgenstein writes in a letter related to the second discovered letter. In fact, in this previous letter we read, I quote, I wrote a long letter, 10 pages, in answer to yours, which I got on Saturday. I wrote it in pencil and so badly that you couldn't read it. Also, parts are only sketched. If I can, I will write it write it out properly or dictate it. Just now I can't as I'm not too well, nervous and better. I'm afraid I can see you next Sunday as someone is coming to visit me. But Sunday, March 11th, will do me. Shall I come to your room? End of quote. Wittgenstein was only able to write out this letter on 11 March 19. Um, 40, uh, 34, but he postponed the scheduled meeting with Zraffa on that day because he thought that uh, uh, he was at the end of his force, so he said, and having to lecture the, the day after, he preferred being in the open air all the afternoon instead of doing something which at all strains him, so discuss it. discussions with Zraffa strain, <laughs> strain him. So, um, they met on uh, 16 March, as we can hypothesize on the basis of the meeting recorded on Zraffa Pocket Diaries E6. Uh, so let's come in now to the second point listing among the philological and the philosophical issues. The discovered letters need to be collocated into the philosophical development of the science thought. The two letters are evidence of Wittgenstein's debt to Zraffa's criticism. They reveal a sort of dependence of Wittgenstein, so dependence of Wittgenstein towards Zraffa's criticisms, which also it creates a certain heinous uh, in uh, Wittgenstein. Uh, it allows him to look more closely, in a more concrete way, at the problems. Uh, they are collocated in the middle of the passages of the movements of thought that will lead to the so-called philosophy of philosophical investigations. From a philological point of view, it should be highlighted that the letter of 21 February has the same date as the note, as the notes for Zraffa, which may be part of it. They deal with the same topic too. In the notes, arguing from the relation between changes of fashion and changes of task, Wittgenstein goes on to develop the discussion begun the previous month about the possibility of nazification of Austria and its consequences. What about the third point? New elements about the relationship between Wittgenstein and Zraffa. Wittgenstein and Zraffa had communicative difficulties due to the different movements of their thoughts. Wittgenstein's thinking, uh, according to Zraffa's judgments, was vogue and didn't give concrete answers to the problems. Wittgenstein seems to take in great consideration Zraffa's way of discussing and the contents of his argument, while Zraffa suffers. Wittgenstein's way of discussing and often uh, finds his arguments superficial, naive, or uh, not satisfying. Uh, the historical circumstances play an important role in Zraffa's perspective. During the discussions with Wittgenstein, the economists criticized the lack of the historical dimension in Wittgenstein's way of thinking. Zraffa and Wittgenstein met more times than those recorded in their pocket diaries. And last day, their attendance was tormented and straining. What about the point concerning the highlighting of aspects related to Wittgenstein's method to do philosophy, method to discuss questions? So, his point is both a philological and a philosophical point. Zraffa's habit of saying on the topic and referring to concrete situations in order to give sense to the phenomena in a linear way. So it's a, a way of, uh, of discussion, or is this method of, of thinking was obsessively punctual and rigorous. Instead, 
Wittgenstein's thinking, according to Straffa's judgments, was vogue and didn't give concrete answers. Wittgenstein's method was to compare disconnected things in Straffa's opinion. Straffa didn't find this method uh, useful for discussing directly the question. The economists, from a more analytic and scientific perspective than that of Wittgenstein, underlined the necessity to give to the questions answers which can be taken into account, which can be considered concrete, visible, measurable things, and which are not spoiled by prejudice and feelings of the moment. For instance, physiognomies. The term of comparison assumed by Wittgenstein in the discussion to which uh, the second letter is related is for Zraffa inadequate. Phys physiognomies, Zraffa said, I quote, are made up of my prejudice, sympathies, etc. I know by experience that my view of the physiognomies changes always after long after and not before which would have to be the case for it, to be advantages for the events I was trying to predict happen it." End of quote. But Wittgenstein, as he tried to explain in the letter dated 11 March 1934, referred to physiognomy because he thought that when one talks about the mentality of people, one should not think of mentality as a mental reservoir that causes ways of acting, behaviors, customs, etc. But one should think of a sum of phenomena observable in the life of a nation, habits, ways of dressing, hygiene, manners, etc. Wittgenstein answering um, Zaffa's criticism acknowledged that he had made a mistake when he called fascism a kind of physiognomy, because, I quote, so uh, Wittgenstein um, writes, fascism isn't a face, but a form of government, end of quote. However, Wittgenstein doesn't seem to believe in forecasts of the future actions of a nation based on a sort of scientific method that reduces them to something uh, that can be misure, uh, so it can account a thing. Uh, this is an important point of divergence between Wittgenstein and Zraffa. So the pivotal point for Wittgenstein seems to be the impossibility of giving uh, an exact reason for the change of actions of a nation, because uh, there are probably different reasons uh, for this change. So the same is for the changes of past, uh, and we can only say what we see uh, from this change, uh, we can only draw attention uh, to the visible elements of it, uh, to the physiognomy of this uh, change. It is conceivable that this position probably left Straffa dissatisfied, not satisfied. Let's come into the last point um, on the philological and uh, philosophical issues. So it is about the emerging aspects uh, of Wittgenstein's personality. Wittgenstein's and Zraffa's difficulties in understanding each other gave Wittgenstein, so as Wittgenstein uh, wrote, a tragic feeling. These difficulties made Wittgenstein anxious. He uh, defined uh, so his state uh, respect his, um, these meetings, these discussions. He gave uh, a great importance to um, the meetings with Zraffa, to the discussions with Zraffa, and he didn't intend to lose the uh, benefit of Zraffa's influence on his thinking. So Wittgenstein had uh, a great respect for the strength of Zraffa's thinking. He appreciated his way of thinking. Uh, Wittgenstein tended to consider it rather critically the arguments and ways of reasoning of other scholars, so of the other scholars he met and with whom he used it to discuss. This ability to recognize a sort of analytical superiority in Zraffa and to appreciate his methods of discussion is certainly a novelty. Now, I intend to consider my personal experience as, as a user, as a reader of the uh, digital edition of the NACLAS uh, and as user of the web resources such as those provided by uh, the Wittgenstein Archives in Bergen. So, 
Uh, I mentioned them uh, at the beginning, so with fine interactive transcriptions platform and Wittgenstein Ontology Explorer. Um, I used uh, them in order to develop my project um, for a Wittgenstein dictionary and uh, uh, my project about Zraffa's influence on Wittgenstein. I realized just a little part of my project with uh, Wittgenstein Dictionary, but let me say a few words, uh, let me spend a few words about the reasons that, in my opinion, uh, make such a tool important and useful also for editing Wittgenstein. At the beginning, I introduced some critical issues of Wittgenstein's writings. Alois Spichler, with an expression that I find very fictitious, defined Wittgenstein's writing as a criss-cross writings. This type of writing uh, is the result of the long and complicated aggressions of uh, his photo, Wittgenstein's photo. It requires uh, the reader continuous changes of perspective and interpretation, even of the same expression, of the same concept. So I use the word concept, I use uh, to, to talk about concept in the meaning in which uh, Wittgenstein intends the concept of concept. So that is uh, an open, fluid, under construction concept. Understanding, distinguishing, and also clarifying the use of concepts by Wittgenstein, as well as understanding the changes of meaning or the nuances of meaning of many concepts in the course of the development of Wittgenstein's philosophy, involve a considerable effort. Furthermore, as we have already noted, the published works are the result of choices of Wittgenstein's trusts. Uh, so by Wittgenstein's classes, which are sometimes not very transparent and in some extent they are controversial. To remedy this, Wittgenstein's scholars and Wittgenstein's editors can choose to deal directly with the raw material, um, free of previous great editorial interventions, high uh, publishing a book. This material is offered by the digitalized NACLAS and through the electronic resources related to this edition, so to the Bergen Electronic Edition or developed in the recent years um, uh, by the Wittgenstein Archive of Bergen. So in my opinion, this shows involves weaknesses and strengths. There are and that full some critical points. What are these critical points? They are aspects of the digitalized edition of Wittgenstein's uh, NACLAS that need to be paid attention and to become aware of it. It is necessary to have already acquired a certain familiarity with Wittgenstein's thought and writings to orient oneself for research through the NACLAS. It is an essential prerequisite, and an essential start point. So the digital edition and the related uh, mentioned web resources, web resources, I think that Alois will explain better than me this point in his talk, are a work in progress. So it means, for instance, that they can include shortcomings or little errors. So what about the strengths? The rigorous study of Wittgenstein's thought by scholars is hard. Approaching Wittgenstein's writings without having a great knowledge of their history and awareness of their critical issues could be particularly insidious. Wittgenstein's thought is not very linear, uh, with various changes of direction, without systematicity, still object of study and source of fruitful readings. All these features appear in a written production characterized by the critical issues that we have mentioned at the beginning of my talk. Due to the critical issues that affected Wittgenstein's writings, it should be useful and to read directly the NACLAS and to use web resources for exploring it. It permits, once again, to use Wittgenstein's expression, to look from towns, extensions, crossings, and depths of Wittgenstein's production. A dictionary, like the one I proposed here, can allow easier access 
to beat Cassine's forge emerging from the necklace. It could be certainly an advantageous tool. It has been created in its partial state, um, searching from the data obtained by the direct analysis of Wittgenstein's necklace in its originality and complexity. It can function both as a valid guide for the exploration of Wittgenstein's thought and for editing his writings and as an opportunity to study Wittgenstein's conceptual apparatus in its particular features and multiple uh, levels. This kind of tool has never been created in Italy uh, and in Italian. So in Italy, also the use of electronic resources related to NACLAS has not yet spread enough uh, among scholars, among Wittgenstein scholars. Instead, on the international scene, we have a president in a Glock's dictionary. What are the differences between Glock's dictionary, the first and so far only published semantic collection work on Wittgenstein's philosophy and ours dictionary? and our dictionary and ours. So the reconstructed entries uh, in our dictionary differ from those of Glock's dictionary in the following points. Methodology. Each item is uh, realized by exploring Wittgenstein's Naklas and taking into account the most recent literature in which it has been argued, it has been uh, considered or described. Purposes. For each entry, it is drawn a description of its evolution and its multi-level sedimentation within the corpus of edited and unpublished Wittgenstein's writings. It is also considered the impact that each concept has had in other areas of knowledge and in general in the history of thought before and after Wittgenstein's thought. The structure. The shoes of the items doesn't coincide with that of Clock's dictionary, especially because we intend to consider what has been shown of Wittgenstein's philosophy from the studies after the year in which Glock completed his dictionary. Furthermore, the organization given to each item is different from that chosen by Glock. Uh, much attention is paid to the development, uh, to, um, to development of the concept within the corpus of Wittgenstein's science writings, providing time coordinates uh, and outlining the different facets and depths of each concept. Interests such as praxis, primitive, gesture have not been included in Glock's dictionary. Glock preferred to include entries such as picture theory, privacy language argument, method of projection, uh, more than analyzing Wittgenstein's direct use of relevant concepts. He constructed pers perspectives of thought or reported theories about Wittgenstein's philosophy. Instead, we prefer, for instance, to let emerge a question such as that of the private language directly from Wittgenstein's writings while we are carrying on the construction and the reconstruction of items like language or solid system. Each entry of Glock's dictionary, Glock's dictionary is an overview of his interpretation of a Wittgenstein's thought and the most important investigations about it. Instead, each item of our dictionary is reconstructed starting from um, it's history in the NACLAS, so starting from what Wittgenstein directly wrote about it. It allows to generate new perspectives on some concepts within Wittgenstein's philosophy. These perspectives are less partial, multi level, and more compliant with the development of Wittgenstein's thought. Let me now shortly show how the entries in our dictionary are constructed. I will consider as an example the two entries that are about to be published in the journal Paradigmi. They are form of life and primitive. First, all the occurrences of each item, both in uh, uh, German and English, are searched for throughout uh, the entire Wittgenstein Atlas by the Wittfind Hub. Uh, the results of this research are verified and explored through uh, the uh, platform that provides the transcriptions of uh, the NACLAS, so the Wittgenstein uh, transcriptions platform we have uh, uh, seen at the beginning in one of the first slides. Uh, then the information considered uh, relevant 
to the work of elaborating the history of the concept and those useful for the description of uh, its semantic development within Wittgenstein's philosophy and where possible also outside it are selected. Often uh, identical uh, occurrences are found in different uh, manuscripts and this requires deciding to keep only those functional uh, to the semantic reconstruction of the concept. So, these are samples of my worksheets. Uh, they show the putting in relation to the different paragraphs and the annotations of all the data. Dates, placement in the class, uh, repeated occurrences of the same paragraph or similar paragraph. We can give an example um, of this letter situation. Um, here we have the paragraph, the Begriff der Bedeutung, somehow eine primitive Auffassung der Philosophie. Here. I put together uh, in this slide and in the next one other similar or identical occurrences of this passage. So, the Begriff, the Bedeutung, wie ich ihn in meine philosophischen Erörterungen übernommen habe, stammt aus eine primitiven Philosophie der Sprache her. Der philosophische Begriff der Bedeutung der Worte als des Fundaments der Sprache ist in eine primitive Idee vom Funktionieren der Sprache zu Hause. Denken wir uns eine Sprache, für die die Darstellung, die Augustinus gegeben hat, gilt. And then the same paragraph in several manuscripts, typescripts. Jener philosophische Begriff der Bedeutung ist in eine primitive Vorstellung von der Art und Weise, wie die Sprache, wie die Sprache funktioniert zu Hause. And once again, jener philosophische Begriff der Bedeutung ist in eine primitive Vorstellung von der Art und Weise, wie die Sprache funktioniert zu Hause. It is also uh, recorded uh, the reference to the corresponding um, occurrences in the published text. So you can see this uh, um, in, uh, in the slide that uh, uh, include, uh, includes the, um, the entry, so the Italian, in Italian, forma di vita, for instance, but also the uh, entry primitives. Okay, okay, go back, okay. Um, if the translation doesn't seem satisfactory or even seems uh, uh, misleading, the passage is translated again and it is expressly reported. In these cases, uh, the reference uh, to the passage of the Italian edition will be, however, included. The network of concepts uh, to which uh, uh, each single entry is connected uh, within a philosophical representation of Wittgenstein is uh, drawn thanks to a scheme like those used by the theory of semantic networks. So this. For each item, the network of the concepts connected to it was indicated according to relationship, uh, relationship of pro proximity or distance. These relationships are expressed by more or less long stretches based on the more or less close relationship of each item with the other concepts. So uh, these are the two um, screenshots of the two published entries included in my uh, PowerPoint presentation. But first, uh, I uh, would underline that work is more complicated uh, with more general concept. So think, for instance, about entries like philosophy, so entry like uh, language. For this type of entries, uh, the number of occurrences increases and also um, the, uh, the number of the relevant occurrences. So that is the number of the occurrences not referred to the description, to the behavior, to the meaning of the analyzed concept. So not, not referred to the concept of philosophy. Uh, so the entire um, the entry and uh, then the schema, so form of life, um, it is in Italian, 
uh, but so mm, the first part, uh, um, uh, it sounds to description of form of life appears uh, in uh, manuscripts 115, dating back to the second half of 1936. It occurs only in German, and Wittgenstein introduces it by arguing that thinking or imagining a language means to imagine a form of life. For Wittgenstein, the same concept of language game hand at highlighting that speaking a language uh, is a part of an activity of a form of life. So as, as you can see, for each collected Wittgenstein's thought uh, with and about form uh, of life, I try to record the uh, multiple uh, occurrences. Uh, for these, uh, um, as for the other items, I try to keep together the development of the concept uh, over the time uh, with uh, any variations or, or overlapping of meaning. Form of life regulation are placed in a relation of equivalence and are placed as conditions uh, um, within which language is constituted, so much so that Wittgenstein writes it is characteristic of our language that it grows on the ground of solid forms of life. So in, um, you find the different uh, occurrences uh, in, uh, um, indicated at the end of the quoted uh, um, paragraph. The entry primitive has more occurrences than the previous one, and so this made the work of reconstruction longer. So also the result uh, uh, is uh, longer. Uh, you, you can see here just a part of the, uh, of the entry that uh, will be published uh, soon. So what about the future goals? The creation of a Wittgenstein dictionary, like the one I described, requires many years of study and research. If it will be carried out, as we hope, as I hope, if its realization will be continued, it should be constantly updated. I think that it would be better if it will become a product of a work of collaboration among Wittgenstein scholars who can discuss together the results of the semantic research and, in addition, they could guarantee with their scientific contribution the multi-perspective construction of the, entry, the entries. So, as I tried to highlight, respecting Wittgenstein's philosophical purposes and this philosophy, it's not a matter of definition. The goal could be not to define concepts, to fix them, but to observe them, to describe them in their provisional nature through Wittgenstein's movements of thought and through the authentic image of them that it can be obtained by analyzing his writings in a most original form. Such a dictionary could be the basis uh, uh, for an electronic condition uh, of it, so accessible in the main European languages, to be uploaded, uh, for instance, on the um, Wittgenstein Ontology Explorer site. It's uh, it is the Wittgenstein, the home page of the Wittgenstein Ontology Explorer site. So uh, the site shows metadata about Wittgenstein. Through it, it is possible to get data related to people who came into uh, contact with Wittgenstein or to authors quoted by him in the NACLAS, as well as in letters and testimonies. This electronic resource also offers the possibility of searching by selecting parameters uh, such as uh, particular range of dates, uh, specific paragraphs uh, of published and unpublished writings. I think that Alois will have most important information about it. I know that the expansion of uh, the metadata, uh, which can be uh, so, which currently can be got on this site through the inclusion of the meanings of the concepts of Wittgenstein's philosophy and on the basis of their occurrences in, uh, uh, as well as their history is one of the future goals of the Wittgenstein Archives of Bergen. So Alois uh, Pichler underlined uh, uh, underline the importance of uh, guaranteeing a multilingual access to Wittgenstein's material, and therefore he proposed the scenario of a conceptual research. So if we, I'm interested in investigating the concept form of life, so for instance, 
By first access to it in Italian, I can better understand its relevance. And I can have an overview of uh, the results of the selection of the most significant occurrences. Running away from uh, gaps and errors to which uh, I will be exposed with uh, an autonomous research uh, directly um, by the NACLAS, so in, uh, uh, in English uh, or in German. So we need to remember that web resources, uh, although they are an innovative, wonderful and useful tool, uh, they continue to be a work in progress. I could also obtain data on the main critical literature that uh, has dealt with this concept. So, uh, how I can conclude? I will give you some impressions and remarks. Editing Wittgenstein me means putting the pieces back together or putting together a puzzle. Um, editing Wittgenstein means disposing to follow the crooked the movements of his foot or taking account the changes of direction and the backward stance of the movements of his foot. Editing Wittgenstein make necessary to familiarize, familiarize with an atlas, also for a tool like the dictionary I proposed. So thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>